So in today's video, I'm going to show you the best camera settings and controller settings. To change both of these, you're going to have to go back to the screen you see now. And at the bottom left where the arrow will be, you need to press left on your stick and then you press A or X to open. It's going to take you to this setting screen. So you are going to make your way over to settings and then you are going to go to game settings. And as you can see here, we have gameplay, match, camera, etc. So for gameplay, I like to have auto shots, assistance headers off, shot assistant on assisted. I like to use time finishing. It depends on you. Time finishing is when you have like a shot around. So you press shoot, press it again at the right time. You get like a shot power boost. Honestly, depends if you want that or not, but I have that on. Then we have passing. I have auto flare pass off. That means like skill passes. I don't like it when my players do that by themselves. So I do have that off. Then we have frugal pass assisted, lob frugal pass assisted, ground pass assisted, cross assisted, lob pass assisted. Player lock can either be animation start, power up or late. I like it on late because just in case someone makes quick passes, you can then decide to stay on the defender you have or switch to another one. So keep it on that. Position pass sensitivity, it comes down to personal preference. Keep it on normal. See if you like it. If you do, then you keep it on there. But you can push it up to high or normal. I like it on normal. It depends on you. Basically, what that means is when the position pass, when you activate it, it depends how fast the cursor moves around on the pitch. So we'll keep it on normal for now. Defending auto clearances are on. Clearance assistance is on directional, so wherever which direction you push it, when you clear is where it's going to go. Jockey's going to be assisted. Now, defending, this comes down to your preference. You can see just underneath my camera, there are three types. Tactical defending, advanced defending, and legacy. Do not use legacy, in my opinion, because when you go into foot champs, all rivals, that won't be activated. So you are going to have a disadvantage if you learn that. Normally, I'd like to keep it on advanced defending because you can hold down A or X on your controller. When they are next to someone, they are going to brush them off and make them tackle or B in circle, which is a manual tacking. Whereas if we were to have tactical defending, you only have the B or circle option. So it's always better to have extra options with the advanced defending. Pass block assistance, always have that on. Switching is, for me, only on air balls. Air balls are basically when the ball obviously is in the air. You have got several other options of automatic. Doesn't feel that great. Only on loose balls. So basically, if, say if you make a tackle and your opponent makes a tackle at the same time and the ball sort of rolls out into the middle of nowhere, you will switch automatically for you there. And you can have it on air balls and loose balls. You can either have it on manually as well, but I wouldn't recommend that because if the ball gets across, you have to manually switch to the right person. Let's say they cross the ball into the box and you're trying to switch between four players, five players, you're not going to find the right one. So have it on only on air balls. It's going to be the best option for you. You can see here the game will only switch players on lobs and crosses. Putting it to the person where they know the ball's going to go to. Auto switching move assistance, make sure that's on none. Right stick switching. Adaptive is basically when you hold it for longer to switch for more distance. Make sure it's on classic. Don't have that on. What that is, is say you want to switch with the right analog stick. It'll put like a little bar in a circle and you can choose who you want. That will freeze your game and slow your frame rate down, making it harder for you to fend. So put it on classic. Just switch like this. Switch, 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 switch. will give you the person who you want. The same for player relative. So right stick switching is player relative. So person who's more central in the defense. We've got ball relative, which means the person closest to the ball. But if you're defending at high level, you want to basically mark the space, not the ball. So make sure that. Sensitivity is a personal preference. Next player switching is obviously classic. Just LB to L1 to switch. Player lock is when you click in both the analog sticks and then you can flick to play passes whether you have that or not is up to you you can turn it off and not worry about it or you can just keep it on and try to practice it what it is is say you control the ball with one player you click in both your analog sticks you can then switch it by switching whether you would normally and you can select somebody else while your ai runs with the ball you can make a run and you can press a pass into space icon switching is exactly the same thing while defending press in the right analog stick to icon switch and you can decide who you want so you can click that in and it will say up down left right we'll select one of those players then we have dribbling contextual dribbling make sure you have that off there will take extra touches for no reason meaning they slow down and search the situations you don't need that on but orbit dribbling you do want it's a new thing they brought in now where you can hold down L2 and L1 or LB and LT and you can move and they'll do extra touches. At least you can do it manually. Goalkeeping is what it is. Then we have analog sprint, which is basically you can sprint while holding down the right trigger or L2 or R2, sorry, and you'll run faster. Stop right there with the introduction of kits, tokens, and now evolutions needed FC points or coins to complete them. There is no better time than to head over to IGDM.com Get yourself some coins, very, very cheap, fast and reliable. Use discount code NANIC at the store and get 5% off. The link will be in the description. 
Then we're going to make our way over to camera. Now, I like to have tele broadcast on both single camera and multiplayer. I will show you what it looks like in a second in game. Then we're going to have co-op, broadcast, pro, and then custom. Now, for me, I like to have 10 height, 10 zoom, zero far side focus. Far side focus is basically they will do a long ball and the ball, the camera will track the ball, not the runner. So say they kick it to clear it, your camera will move away, but you'll be controlling players off camera like my hand is now. Make sure that's on zero. Ball tracking speed is the same thing. Make sure that's on zero as well. It basically adjusts the camera to keep up with the ball. We don't need that. Penalty area zoom is a new thing. So when you enter inside the penalty box, it zooms in naturally. That is so annoying on the beta. So have that on zero. Just like you would in any other FIFA or EA Sports game when you're playing. Pro camera 10, 10, 10 again. Power shot zoom. So when you do the power shot, which is LB and RB or L1, R1 together and you shoot, it does a zoom in again. Turn it off. You don't need it. Whether you want to keep it on or not is completely down to you, but I don't really need it. You don't need it on. And then the rest are pretty self-explanatory. After that, we don't have any other settings, as you can see here, visual. I like to have a player name bar. So basically, that means at the bottom of your screen, you have the player's name and how much power is on the bar. Then I have it on large. It's normally on this. It's too small for me. I like it on large. And then the rest are just how you feel. You can hold to skip, etc. time to score, blah, blah, blah. Whether you want that or not, it's down to you. This is just to show you the visual stuff on the screen. Now, if you were to back off and go into a game, you can see exactly why I like my camera where it is and why I like to have it. I like to use the radar a lot. I use the radar to see what well, my opponents are making runs off the camera. I also like it because I'm very close to left stick dribbling and passing. I'm really like a tick attacker player. So what that means is I like to do a lot of passes in certain areas and making sure that I've got myself in the closest I can be and still see the space. So as we go into this one here, all we need to do is shot, shot a target. You'll just see what my camera looks like and you can go from there. Of course, everyone's preference is different, but the closer you are to the screen, the more you have in terms of getting the right no latency. So you can see here, we can see the camera perfectly. The names at the bottom of the screen have got the power bar. If you need them underneath, you see the little green bar going up. If we kick the ball down the other end, it's going to track the ball at all times. We've got ourselves the indicator if we need it. And we've basically got ourselves in a good position here to be able to do stuff that we need. Now, the reason why I like it this close, you can see just about the top of the screen and just about the bottom. But if we use the radar, we can see people that are running. We've got ourselves the black and triangles here. And we've got ourselves a pass. Get this shot on target and that's it done. So there's a shot on target. We've done it. But you can see there, there's the camera. If you do find yourself that the scoreboard has too many things that pop up on the screen, you can also turn that off. Now, if you have any questions or don't understand something, please comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're new to the channel, we are going to be doing so much on EAFC24. This is just the start. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. See you.